Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Perspectives. Darren Jaime here with you. As we said at the top of the show, we are discussing the MTA, those possible fare hikes that could have come your way, as well as the possibility of tolls. Uh, so many things going on. People are talking about the tolls, and they just don't want to pay any more. But yet and still, there's a possibility that more could be on the table. Our guest in studio is someone very familiar with those activities going on with the MTA. Veronica Vanterpool is the Associate Director of Tri-State Transportation Campaign, which is a not-for-profit policy and advocacy organization working for a more balanced transportation network in downstate New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Veronica, thank you so much thank you. for sharing with us, and we apologize on television for the challenges <laughs> already. Thank uh, you. I want to ask you, let's talk about the MTA, the proposal of fare hikes. We know that New Yorkers are staunchly against it, but then yet and still some New Yorkers say, you got to do what you got to do. How do you look at it? Well, at this point, it's not a proposal anymore. Um, Governor Patterson signed the legislation in on Thursday. So all of us are going to see fare increases. Um, but w what we won't see is a 23% fare increase, and we won't see our subway and bus service cut or reduced, which is a big um, relief for so many of us, not only in the Bronx, but citywide and then suburban-wide as well throughout the entire state. So what we will see is a 10% fare hike, which is more modest than 23%. Um, but it's something that, unfortunately, all of us need to deal with. It's part of having a system that gets us where we need to be. It's not a perfect system, and it certainly uh, has flaws that need to be addressed, but it can't be addressed if there's no capital there to do that. Let's talk about some of those flaws. What, you know, there's some money that's needed, of course. Of, of course, we talk about capital improvements. We talk about equipment maintenance and things of that nature. When the MTA was talking, they were justifying the, 20, the 23%. Uh, what part didn't you just quite get with? Because I know that you, you felt that there were some things that, you know, really mm -hmm. could have been addressed differently. Well, there's a whole bunch of things that we just couldn't really get with, um, honestly. And part of the problem is that the, our, our politicians are very quick to blame the MTA, but not as quick to take responsibility for their role in causing the MTA to have these funding shortfalls that they have. And that's problem number one, um, which actually leads to all of us needing to pay a little bit more for our subway and bus rides and, and deal with service that is less than uh, what we all expect to get for the fares that we pay. But in reality, we are not really paying the true cost of a subway or bus ride. Um, to m have the system expand and even just maintain service as it is, as it is, needs a tremendous amount of capital. And the state legislature knows that. But they've been playing a lot of political horse trading over the past five months. You know, and it really doesn't come down to what's best for all of us. It really comes down to how they can trade votes in, votes in the Senate and in the Assembly. And I think that's frustrating because they're playing with our livelihoods and our access to opportunity. And many of us need to wake up and, and realize um, and challenge our elected officials and ask them who it is that they're looking out for. Why do you feel that the MTA isn't on the top of their agenda up in, up in Albany? They're easy to, um, the MTA is a very complex authority. Um, you know, they've existed for decades. Their finances are very, very confusing for the general public to understand. I, frankly, as a transit advocate who's been looking at the numbers for years now, find it difficult. It's just a complex agency. There's um, a lot of funding streams and mechanisms so that, you know, when people start, it's very easy for people's eyes to glaze over when they listen to the MTA. And then there's a lot of misperceptions there, too, this whole thing with the two books. Not true. Um, the whole thing with the surplus. There was a surplus, but it was rolled into reducing the next year's deficit. But you never hear the media talk about that. Um, it, but these are perceptions that linger and persist, and they're hard to break down. Mm -hmm. And our politicians capitalize on that. So when you talk about the politicians capitalizing, let's talk a little bit about these tolls here in the borough of the Bronx. Uh, as we know, we talked about the possibility of new tolls here in the Bronx. We've heard from Bronxites. They say, listen, you know what? We're the ones that are going to be the most affected. Agree, disagree. Disagree. Um, well, tolls are not on the table anymore. Uh, the, the plan that was put forth is a plan without tolls. So the plan that was signed into legislation is a plan that asks drivers to contribute, which is smart because it's a balanced plan. It's asking drivers, businesses, and then users of the system to pay more and to pay into the system. Um, is it a, the most equitable way of doing so, the plan that was signed into legislation? I don't think so. Um, and I'm glad that you brought this up because tolls is an issue that people 
are so strongly opposed to many Bronx legislators and outer borough legislators are as well. But what that fact sheet that you're looking at shows is that mm -hmm. only 5.7% of Bronx sites in the Bronx sites, the whole Bronx would be impacted by tolls. You know what we, we, what we would be impacted most by? Huge increases in subway and bus rides. That means that only 5.7% of Bronx sites use their car to get into Manhattan. Where are the rest of the Bronx sites? They're on subways and buses. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about it being unfair to low and middle class, what's unfair is that low and middle class individuals are on the subway and the bus. They're not driving their car into Manhattan. And I want to take a look at the graph that you see right there on your screen. As you see, there is household vehicle ownership, and that is in the green part, uh, people who own one or more vehicle, that number is 38.4%. And then you see that little blue uh, part of the pie graph, and that is 61 Point six percent own no vehicle. And I'm really, <laughs> really glad that you highlighted that because that's important for our borough in particular. The Bronx is the borough in the 12th county NTA region with the lowest car ownership rate. That means that very few people in this Bronx, in this borough, compared to the other 11 that the NTA serves, own a car. So how is it that Bronx sites are getting around on subways and buses, not by their car? So it's a misperception that is often um, propagated by elected officials that low and middle income people are going to be hurt the most by bridge tolls because low and middle income people are on subways and buses, not driving their car into Manhattan. Amazing statistic there. Thank and this you. Is, uh, I'm sorry, it. this is based on census data. This isn't data that Tri-State um, collected. This is data that is objective. It's from the census. And so you guys know for, for a fact that 61.6% of Bronxites don't even own a vehicle. That's an amazing statistic in itself. Let's talk about these possible alternatives that we could have saw to a fair increase. We know that it's coming. What would you have liked to see as an alternative? Uh, as an alternative, we would have liked to see some sort of mechanism that asked drivers coming into Manhattan to pay, whatever that is. It could have been tolls, it could have been congestion pricing, but the bottom line is it needs to be something that's equitable. Again, that asks drivers and businesses and riders to pay. Um, we think asking or charging motorists to pay makes sense because the free bridges are not free. Taxpayers pay for that. It costs $600 million or more for us to maintain those free bridges. It's not free for you and I to get into Manhattan. We must pay a subway or a bus fare. Why should it be free for people who drive into Manhattan with their cars? Add to congestion, add to pollution in the border communities, East Harlem and the South Bronx, both of which have very high asthma rates already. And many, many drivers do come from affluent suburbs, bypassing the Triborough Bridge from Westchester, driving through the Third Avenue and Willis Avenue Bridge, which are free. And they add to congestion. Who's dealing with that congestion? Who's dealing with the wear and tear? The communities that border that. So you are in favor of congestion pricing? I, yes, we are in favor of congestion pricing or tolls, anything that balances it out, anything that makes but with the revenues solely dedicated to mass transit, that is the caveat for us to support any sort of, you know, pricing mechanism. The revenue has to go to mass transit. All right, Veronica, we got to end on that note. But we thank you so much for coming and sharing with My us pleasure. here. Veronica Vanderpool is the Associate Director of Tri-State Transportation Campaign. And we thank her for coming and sharing with us in regards to the MTA. So now, how do you feel about these new fare hikes? How do you feel about the bridges and the tolls and the things that we talked about? Well, coming up after the break, we're going to hear from you and get your perspective as to what you think.